Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the metronome or making a click track in Reaper. To turn on the click track, we'll go up right here to our toolbar and click this. This turns on our metronome. And to hear it, just hit play and we hear our metronome. We could also turn it on from a menu. Under options, go to metronome and we could turn it on and off from here. Also notice, by default, there's no keystroke assigned, but we can add one by going to our actions, typing in metronome, and we could add one right here. But for now, we'll leave this off. And we'll turn it on and off from our toolbar. Now to get to the settings, we'll right click it. And that opens up this dialog. We can adjust the settings for our metronome or our click track. By default, it's set up like this, where we're going to hear the metronome on playback and also on recording. We could change the way that works though. We could turn it off during playback and we'll just hear it during recording. So if I hit play, I don't hear the metronome or the click track even though this is turned on. So I have to turn this on to hear it in playback. But if it's just selected for recording, and we hit play, we don't hear it. But if I go into record, then we hear the click track. So it's kind of helpful while doing recording, because in most situations, you don't want to hear the click track or the metronome in playback. You just want it there as a timing reference. So most times, we just want it on for recording, which is this option right here. But by default, it's set up like this. Let's see this off for now. If we go up over here, this is the routing for our metronome. If we click it, by default, it's sending to output one and two. But we can change that. We could turn it off here and just send it to our headphones. In this situation, it's output three and four. But we can send it any way we want. But if we choose it here, and it's not chosen here, we're not going to hear our click track in the control room. But the people wearing headphones are still going to hear it. But let's put it back to the main output and turn it off on the headphones. So now it's just coming out output one and two. And in my situation, it's the control room. Now over here, we could choose a count in for the metronome. By default, it's turned off, but if we turn it on during playback or for recording, if I hit play at bar three, we hear the click track, but we hear two extra bars. So it gives us a counting. And we can choose to have it on during playback or just during recording. So if we turn it off here and we hit play, there's no count off. But if we're going to record, we get a two bar counting, which can be adjusted right over here. By default, it's at the two bars, but we can change it to anything we want. Let's change it to one bar, and it's only going to count in during recording. Let's turn off the metronome during playback. Now we're only going to hear it during recording, and we'll get a one bar count in during recording as well. Hit play. Go into record. So it gives us an extra bar to get ready. Now it's important to note that even though we're getting a count in, it's not really a pre-roll. So if we go to bar four, it's still gonna start playing from here, but we're not gonna hear the music. We're just gonna hear a count in. Go into record.
So not actually hearing the music before, it's just a counting, even though we're visually seeing it play from bar three. Although we can do that using pre-roll, which I'll show you in a bit. Now over here, we can adjust the volume of our metronome. We can make it lower, or we can make it louder. Now this level is the overall level. We could also adjust the secondary level. Let's bring this down. This adjusts the secondary beat. So if we notice, there's two different sounds playing. We could adjust their level from each other right from here. So if we want the second one to be a bit lower, just bring it down. Or if you want it to be louder, just bring it up. But the default is about over here. Now down over here, we can adjust the pattern. By default, it's playing A, B, B, B. So we're hearing one note and then three more hits of a different note. But we can change that pattern right here. Instead of A, B, 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 let's make it A, B, A, B. And let's hear that. Hear the difference? Or we could also change it to A, B, B, A. Let's hear that. But let's put it back to our default, A, B, B, B. Now down over here, we could change how it sounds. Right now it's generating a frequency to give us that sound. The first sound is 800 hertz, and the second sound is 1600 hertz. But we could change it to say 400 hertz, and 800 hertz, which will sound like this. It's a bit deeper. Or we can go higher and make this 1600 and this one 3200. We could also change the length of it. Let's put this back to the default 800 and 1600. And let's make them longer. Right now it's 4 milliseconds. Let's make it 25 milliseconds. And let's hear that. And we could also adjust the shape of it. By default, it's set to soft, but we could change it to hard, which sounds like this. It's a bit clicky. Now, if you don't like these sounds, we can create our own custom click track right here using two different sounds. Let's browse for the primary one. Right over here, I have some click sounds. Let's choose a cowbell for the primary sound. And for the secondary sound, let's choose a shaker. Now let's hear that. So now we created our own custom click. And if we want to go back to the default sounds, just clear this out. Now down over here is the section I mentioned before called pre-roll. This behaves in a similar way to our counting, except it's actually a pre-roll. So we'll hear music before we actually start recording. So let's turn it off over here and leave the metronome on only while recording. So it's turned off during playback and we'll go to pre-roll and turn it on just while recording. It's set up to be two measures. So now, let's delete this. 
If I hit play from here, it plays back normally. No pre-roll and no click track. But if I start over here and go into record, we should get two bars of pre-roll with our metronome. But it doesn't go into record until we get here. But the difference between using the count off over here is that with pre roll, we're gonna hear the music. So if we punch in at bar five with a two bar pre roll, we're gonna hear this music. But it's not gonna go into record until we get to bar five. So we can start recording at bar five, but we can hear playback from bar three. So we can get ready to start recording. Now I should mention two other things. Let's delete this. If we go back to a count off, let's turn the pre-roll off. There's an option over here, start counting at start of measure. This is turned off by default, but if we turn it on, our counting is gonna start on the bar or on the top of the measure. With it turned off, we're gonna get one bar of counting, but it's based on the edit cursor. So it may not be at the top of the bar or the beginning of the measure. So if we start at bar three, beat three, right here, the counting is gonna start from here at bar two, beat three. Watch. So we get a full bar count in, but it doesn't start at the top of the bar, or bar two, or measure two. The count in starts one full bar from our edit cursor. So it starts here. But if we turn on the preference, start counting at start of measure, no matter where we place our edit cursor, it's still gonna start the count in at the top of a bar or the beginning of a measure. So if I place it here, it should give us a count in from here. So it's a little bit easier to follow along. And the same thing happens with pre roll. So if we turn this off and our count in off and use pre roll instead for recording, we're going to make sure. Start pre roll at start of measure is turned on. And it is on by default. Let's change this to one bar. Now, if we go into record at bar four, we still get one bar of counting. But if we start over here instead, it's going to put that pre roll at the top of a bar or the beginning of a measure. In this case, just went back to bar three. Let's change it to be two bars. And now it should go back to the top of bar two for our pre roll. But it doesn't punch in until right over here. And we could turn the pre roll on and off for playback or for recording completely separately. So when we keep it like this, we can play our song with no pre-roll and no metronome in play mode, but we'll hear the clip track and get pre-roll when we go into record. So that's pretty much it. That's the metronome or the clip track in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.